Uh, Tucker, you were the most successful um, test cricket captain in the history of the game. Stewie McGill recently said uh, you were the perfect captain for him. He didn't want fluff. He didn't want lies. <laughs> he wanted it straight. Is that the way you <laughs> captained all your teams? Well, yeah, probably not that direct. I mean, but Stewie was one of those guys where there was no point in, uh, in messing around. Um, you know, out in the field, I'd sort of ask him what sort of field he wants set and he'd go, mate, I don't care, put him wherever you want, I'll just bowl and uh, a new captain in this at the field. So it was always pretty simple with McGiller. Um, he just wanted to turn the ball as much as he could and that was as simple as it was for him. So there's no point in getting into the dynamics and, and talking too much about it. So I guess from my point of view, you do got to try and um, work out, uh, push the buttons for each individual, what makes them tick. Some players um, don't mind a bit of tough love, others you need to nurture a bit and, and find a way to motivate them. And I think that's the key, working out what motivates different players. It could be statistics, it could be money they're earning from the game. It could be proving the selectors wrong. It could be coming back from injury. Um, there's lots of different reasons. So you've just got to try and tap into that and then work out um, how you can get the best out of each, each player. But I wasn't one to make big speeches. My, I guess, methodology was, you know, um, leading by by actions and not so much words, but, you know, having one-on-one -on -one players with the chats away from the game, not so much at the ground itself. So how, how much research did you do on the opposition? Yeah, when, when I was um, captain, I suppose, you know, we, we do a fair bit. I, I was always sort of more, more concerned with what we were doing, but obviously key players in the opposition team, you want to research and you've got to have a plan, not only plan A, but a plan B. And sometimes with the great players like, you know, uh, Tendorka and Lara, plan B doesn't work. So as a captain, you've got to try and figure it out on the go. And that's um, one of the great challenges of leading against, um, you know, amazing players. But, um, yeah, preparation was important. We, we generally have a, a big preparation before the first test match and uh, that would mean a couple of days and you might have a batting group and a bowling group and someone in charge of different groups and we'd analyse the opposition thoroughly. But once you got into the contest of a, either a five or a six test match series, which it used to be, um, it was mainly just topping up things. And if you're going well, um, I didn't like it. I, I thought there's no point in tinkering with it too much. Just um, let it roll along and pretty much do what you've been doing. Don't and overanalyze. That was um, one of the keys, I think, to our success when we won a lot of Ashes series is um, that we didn't have too many meetings. Um, you know, John Buchanan liked a lot of meetings. Um, you know, other coaches didn't so much. But even if we did have a team meeting, I didn't want it to be too long because at the end of the day, you need to think to yourself on the ground, um, think on your feet, improvise, um, you know, and, and work things out quickly. But, um, yeah, yeah, team meetings are important, but they're more so before the first test match. Steve, just while you're talking about that, I mean, I, I got a feeling watching the summer against uh, India, particularly the last two test matches when I was watching Australia, that I, I just felt that they didn't have the instinct you know, of a captaincy or the senior players to really manoeuvre what do they need to do to, to, to bowl the opposition out. And that's yeah. where I felt they got caught. Do you feel, watching last summer, that there's a bit of that instinct gone or they've missed it a bit? Yeah, look, that's a good point. I mean, uh, and it's always easy when you're watching the game. Yeah, it seems obvious what you've got to do. But when you're out there under pressure and you've been playing all year, you, you tend to sometimes overlook these things. But, um, yeah, it, it possibly has because... Um, you're planning so much these days and you have um, different bowlers who specialise against different batsmen and um, you have all these set plans. And when it doesn't quite work off, sometimes you might have that plan B or that plan C or that one that's a bit out of the box and um, left, left field thinking. So that was possibly needed by Australia in a few of the test matches that they, sh they should have won and they either drew or lost on the fourth and fifth day. Um, maybe we relied too much on the, you know, the quartet of amazing bowlers and, Sometimes those guys get tired. I mean, if Nathan Lyon's bowling 30 or 40, 30 overs in a day, the opposition batsmen do tend to set themselves and they get the rhythm and the pace of what he's bowling. And perhaps he needs a break sometimes. I, I felt on occasions Nathan Lyon has been over bowling. He needs um, a bit of a break just to recharge his batteries, to freshen up and maybe swap ends or go around the wicket or over the wicket and just mix things up a little bit and um, potentially use um, bowlers like Labashane, I think is an underrated bowler. And uh, maybe the bits and pieces bowlers can come in and do the job because sometimes you've got these four amazing bowlers and think they're going to do it for you every time and you, and that's your plan A and you keep relying on when it doesn't work, you um, you sort of forget about that um, intuitive, instinctive moment. So sometimes you need to win a test match and potentially we've, we've probably missed out on that in a few test matches over the last four months. Uh, Tugger, um, you were obviously there in 2019, the first time that you Aussies uh, took the ashes back for, I think, 18 years. Um, are you <laughs> going to be involved this time round? I speak to Justin Langer pretty regularly and um, look, there's enough people involved and um, I really enjoyed being uh, back around the team in that Ashes you know, campaign. It was, 
there's nothing better for me as an Australian player or being part of a support squad to go to England. I think it's it is a home of cricket. And that was it was a great series and it was up and down and exciting. But um, this time around, no no plans to be directly involved. But I'm always open to anyone calling me up and having a chat. Um, you know, I think as an ex-player and ex-captain, you, you should make yourself available if the current players want to have a chat to you. So I'll leave it up to Justin and the players. If, uh, if they want to chat, then I'm always open to that. Vaughan, question for you. How would Joe Root be starting his preparation for this summer coming up? How, how big a deal is it for him? You two guys are captains, but for Joe Root, Vaughan, how big a series it is for him? Oh, it's huge. I mean, uh, I, would, I would think that Joe started his... Uh, planning and, and kind of thought process around trying to beat Australia in Australia after 2019. Um, this will be his third attempt of a, as an Ashes. He obviously got a hammer in over in Australia, uh, drew two all in the UK, uh, and obviously this is his third attempt, and it's not easy going to Australia. We know how tough it is to beat a, an Aussie team in their own backyard. So, you know, the, the kind of Jigsaw puzzles are starting to, to, on both sides, starting to look quite similar. Um, I think both are kind of captains that are desperate for maybe one or two more batsmen. Um, the bowling attacks look pretty sure of themselves. I think England will be, you know, hoping that Jack Leach can get better and better. He did pretty well in India. Uh, the spin options is, is always a, an issue uh, for the England team, but the, the quick bowling, skillful seam bowling options. Uh, with Anderson Broad still going, uh, Joffrey Archer, Ollie Stone's come through quite nicely, Chris Wokes, Sam Curran. Uh, I, I guess Joe Root's kind of uh, hitting the pillow at night will always be, can he get 20 wickets in Australia, you know, with the Kookaburra ball? And that's going to be England's real challenge uh, in a few months' time, is getting those 20 wickets. Because the last two times they've been there, they've lost 4-0, 5-0. It's because they've not been able to bowl the Aussies out cheaply enough. And then obviously that powerhouse of a pace bowling attack has pretty much blown them away and, and, and the mentality has, has been fragile by, by the time the third, fourth and fifth test has come because they've been beaten up. But uh, that first test is always the key. If they can get out of Brisbane with something like they did in 2010-11, uh, they'll have a chance. If they get blown away in Brisbane, um, they'll, they'll find it quite difficult. Because of your reputation in England, Tucker, if, if you declare yourself available for advice, 10 Englishmen will <laughs> ring you up. <laughs> <laughs> I can always give bad advice. You know, it's not always good advice, I get. Um, I'm open to that as well. <laughs> well, well Tucker, what, what do England need to do, do you think? I mean, you know, we're open. We, we're chatting about cricket. What, what's the key yeah. to England? What do you think they need to do to win out here? Yeah, well, Vaughan is right there. Um, the ability to take 20 wins. But, but first of all, um, I think Australia and England, very similar lineups at the moment, that um, they need to score 600 runs at least in the match um, over the two innings is to give themselves a chance. They've both got bowling attacks capable of taking 20 wickets. Um, I think for England, the, the key player is Joffre Archer, really. He, um, he's something different and will enjoy the pace and bounce of the Australian wickets. And, um, you yeah, know, potentially he's he's a world-class bowler. Um, you know, when I first saw him, I thought um, this is... It looked very similar the first time I saw Kirtley Ambrose in that um, he has that ability to lift to that extra gear and he can, he can make things happen quickly. So he really... To me, is a trump card for England's chances in Australia. And um, but obviously they've got to score runs. Both batting orders have been a bit brittle over the last six to twelve months. And um, England need to, like Australia, need to get six hundred runs on the board in both innings. And both teams are then are capable of bowling the opposition twice. So it's it's really up to the batters to lay the platform for for England. They need um, a really good first innings total, and um, and it's exactly the same for Australia. So I see this being a, a very even contest. 